Now, what is going on everybody? Today we are going to continue working on setting up dependency injection with uh, Avalix. Uh, but before we do that, let me just explain like on a conceptual level on how this library works. So in the previous video, we already saw that uh, we were just exporting like one instance of uh, our controller or our service. And this is actually what we want to change. And the way this library works is it provides us something called a dependency injection container or just container in short. So this is basically shown here as a great thing. And what you can do in here is you can register classes in here. You can also register values and, and other things, but like for simplicity, let's just say you can register classes. So you can say, hey, this is a controller. This is like my dev service. This is my data access object. And this is the database. And now instead of directly importing um, like the dependency, uh, as we've seen like in the last video, uh, what this library is going to do is um, it's going to inject like an instance of this into your code if you need it. So that means if you need to make use of, for example, this dev service, then what you just do is you write a constructor and you say you in the constructor, um, you say, okay, I need this dev service and this dependency injection container will then create an instance of it and will pass it to your class. And this is pretty cool because it's going to automatically resolve the dependencies that you need. And that is why it's called dependency injection because you inject something from like an application context or container inside of an object. So the object itself is not creating, is not responsible for creating the dependencies on its own, but just expects that someone or something gives it, uh, gives the dependencies uh, to, it, to it. I don't know whether that was proper English, <laughs> but anyway, um, that's basically how this entire dependency injection thing works. And it's pretty handy because if you test, you can just inject like dummies or uh, I don't know, fakes, mocks, uh, whatever you want to inject. And this makes things just way easier and less coupled. So uh, let's just go back to this um, library here and let's try to install it. So I'm just going to um, copy this. Uh, I will go to the code. I'm just going to cancel this one, clear it. And then I'm going to npm install this library and it should be done in a second. And um, now the question is, how do we set this thing up? So we somehow need to set up like a container, as I've just shown you, that contains everything that we want to use. And in their documentation, they have a couple of examples on like how to do this. So uh, we basically, let me make this a little bit bigger. We basically need to um, create like a container and once we have this container, we can just register like all our controllers and, and services or whatever we want to use. Okay, and this is exactly what we are going to do. So I'm just um, going to um, create a new file and I'm just going to call this uh, dependency injection setup.js. And here it is. And what I'm going to do inside of this file here, I'm going to import um, this library, Avilix, require Avilix. Okay, here it is. And now I'm going to create the container. And for this, I can just copy um, that statement over here. And by the way, if you're wondering what is this like proxy injection mode, well, it's this basically determines on how your dependencies are resolved. So if you use this proxy uh, mode, uh, then what it's going to do is it's just going to inject, wait, where is it? Here it is. It's just going to inject like uh, the container itself. And then you can immediately just destructure from the container what you need. But there's also other options. So sometimes uh, if you want to, you can, it can also try to match it by name. So say if you have something regist registered as database, and you just put in um, whoops, something like database, 
then it's going to automatically take like this thing. So this is what you can do as well. Um, but I think the default is just fine for, for getting to know this entire thing. Okay, so let's just uh, grab this thing. Um, let's create the container. And now everything that we need to do is um, we just need to uh, make a method, a function. And in there, we're just going to register all of our stuff or all the things that we want to inject somewhere. And uh, that is kind of the special thing about this library. So in some frameworks and in some technologies, for example, in Spring Boot, it's going to do all of this on its own. Um, with this library, you have to do it yourself, but it's not too bad. And also it will, like you can do things in a completely wrong way, because if you have circular dependencies, for example, it's just going to crash, like if you try to start it. Cool. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, uh, dev controller, and then I'm going to say Evelix as class, and then dev controller. So what this means is I want to register the class dev controller under the key, so to say dev controller. And we need to import this. And at the moment, we are only exporting like one instance of it. So that is what we are going to get rid of. So I'm just going to only export the class. And we need to do this for pretty much everything, like for this data access object here as well. So this one and where's the service? Uh, where's the service? I don't see the service. Ah, here it is. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of this as well. Okay, so now we export this and now we can uh, go back to our file. And now we need to import all of the things here. So I'm just going to say called staff controller equals uh, require. And this is uh, what no, where are we were in controller uh, dev. Then we're going to import the service. So we're going to say a dev service service equals uh, require. And this is in service and then dev. And then I'm going to say um, dev data access object. And I'm going to import this as well. Data access object dev. And we also need to import the database. Now that one is interesting um, because it is not a class. So if we go back to, let me just check. Where is this? Here it is. So here you can see uh, what we're exporting here is not a class, but it is directly, we're directly exporting an object. And that is totally fine. So this Avalix con dependency injection is not just limited to uh, classes, but you can register like any value. And in that case, it's totally fine because this object, it implements a connection pool. So it has a pool of database connections and it's just fine to always use the same object over and over again. So for this, what we're just going to do is we will go back and we're just going to import the database as well. And database. And I think that should be it in terms of imports. And now everything we have to do here is we just have to register all that stuff. So I'm just going to say dev service is evalix.s class uh, dev service. And then I'm going to register the data access object. Oh, I think it needs to be a colon right now. Uh, evalix.s class dev data access object. And to register something as is, so to say, you can just say Evelix dot as value DB. Yeah, I think that should be it. Cool. So now we have a method. Now we create a container. Uh, this is kind of like a global variable. And we have like a method and it's going to automatically uh, yeah, register everything. Okay, cool. And then what we can do is we need to export this. So I'm just going to say module.exports 
and I'm going to export the container and the setup. Now, technically, what you could do is um, you could make, you could have this function, you could execute this function immediately so that it's basically like a global setup thing. I'm just not going to do this. So we will need to call this manually, but that's also fine because um, it's just easier to understand like if you see the code on what you have to do. Okay, um, what is the next step now? I just need to check. Um, I think we can actually, yeah, try the setup in our um, server. So the thing is, uh, our server imports this router and the router itself imports like this controller. And at the moment, it's just assuming that, uh, well, we just export like one single instance, uh, but we don't. Now we export like a class. So we basically need to get this dev controller from our uh, container. And um, I think since we are already over 10 minutes, let's just do that in the next video. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, please give the video uh, a like, and also please subscribe to the channel. If you have a question, uh, please leave me a comment. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And I've also created an email list, which I have linked in the description down below. So if you want to have a say in what we cover next in this channel, if you want to have a specific video, a specific topic that we should cover, uh, then you can sign up there. And from time to time, I'm just going to send an email around. So again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.